When Ford introduced the 4.6 liter four valve Cobra motor back in 1996 in the Mustang, it was a big step up in performance. So let's take a look at some modifications for that early four valve. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some performance upgrades for the 1996 to 1998 4.6 liter four valve modular Ford motor. We've got intake upgrades, camshafts, nitrous, and boost. It's a lot of stuff to cover. So let's get going. Like many of these tests, this was run long ago <laughs> before the advent of YouTube, but it came in response to another series that I ran where I was testing a number of different 4.6 that are four valve modifications. And we were testing on a newer motor. It was actually a crate motor that I got from Ford Racing. And it was an 03, 04 Cobra crate motor. And so we ran a bunch of tests on that. But the early guys, the B-headed guys, the 99 and or 98 and earlier B headed 4.6 liter four valves that the first the, the four valve stuff that first came out those guys said hey what about us we need we need some love too we want to see what kind of modifications do you know what kind of power gains we can get with these earlier motors so I decided to do a series on the early 4.6 liter four valve and we ran a ton of stuff on it so I'm going to bring that to you guys but here is our baseline power output now this was a 4.6 liter four valve it was a 97 or 98 and it was one that I borrowed from John Mahovitz over at AccuFab. I didn't even have one and we didn't get one from the wrecking yard. We ran a number of tests on it that, that showed little or no gain. Like we ran the Emmert plates on and off and open and close and did all that stuff. And they did kind of what you would, what you would think they do. The Emmert plates are designed to produce, help swirl and produce and improve low speed power and stuff. But getting rid of them showed very little little power gain. So this is our baseline run. It was a stock motor. It had long tube hooker headers on it. It had, in this case, had a fast XFI management system on it. So we had the air fuel and timing right. It had 36 pound injectors on it. It had an open throttle body and it had a Mazir electric water pump. So run in this configuration with long tube headers are otherwise stock 1998 4.6 liter four valve produced 336 horsepower and 327 foot-pounds of torque. So one of the things that we did, what was really big back in the day when guys were doing these things, is they were modifying the factory intake because you could remove the upper lid off of the factory intake manifold. And what a lot of guys were doing were cutting the factory runner. So they were shortening the runner length to improve the power at the top. So, you know, you get all that big top-end charge. And they're especially were doing this <laughs> and they're calling it blower manifolds or turbo manifolds or you know because when you have boost none of that stuff matters <laughs> well as we found out over and over again with every engine configuration it matters a great deal so what they did was they would cut the runner lengths make them shorter to improve the breathing but unfortunately we got to test one of those and I'll, and I'll show you what happened i'll show you a photo of it you guys can take a look at it here but here's what happened when you shorten the runner length on the factory intake manifold or do any kind of version of that. There were other versions of that that people offered that were basically shorter runners of the factory deal. And here's what happened. The shorter runner length is in red. And as we would expect, there might be some gain at really high RPM. We only ran this thing to 6,500 because it was past the power peak on this combination. And we'll run it a little bit higher when we put camshafts in it. But Shorting the runner, the only thing that it did is basically kill the power through most of the RPM range from 3,500 all the way out to the only time that the cross, the thing, this thing crossed over was 6,200 RPM. So shorting the runner on a early 4.6 liter four valve Cobra motor does the same thing that it does on every other motor I've ever tested it on. <laughs> it ruins the power curve. It produces less power for most of the range and only at the very, very top will we see a gain in power? And in this case, because the motor with the cam timing that it had was already past the power peak, there just wasn't a lot to be had. So equipped with the short runners, our combination still produced 336 horsepower, but unfortunately, peak torque was down to 301 foot-pounds of torque. So important note, if you want to shorten the runner length on your Cobra motor, it's better that you don't do it. So let's take a look at our next modification. After running the intake test on our early 4.6 liter four valve, we decided to push the easy button. And obviously, if you guys have been watching this channel at all, you know that the easy button is nitrous. So we hooked up a simple uh, single fogger deal where we run, where we combine the nitrous and the fuel in a single fog fogger nozzle and uh, supply that to the throttle body. So here's what happened when we installed our nitrous shot. Our power output jumped from 336 horsepower 
to 415 horsepower, and that was with a 40 nitrous jet. But as you can see, if you take a look at the curve, it's a little jaggedy. We weren't um, spot on on our tune on this. We actually had the thing get kind of rich out at the end. So what we did, and this is an option for you guys and something you should know about nitrous, is there are two options. Basically, you can take, uh, well, there are a couple of options. First of all, you can take fuel jet away to reduce the amount of fuel you're supplying with the nitrous. You can also lower the fuel pressure to the system that you're supplying to the nitrous. Um, but we did the other thing, and that is we go up in nitrous jet <laughs> to offset the amount of fuel. If you have too much fuel, then you should just add nitrous, and that's exactly what we did. So we put a 46 nitrous jet in it, and the power output jumped up, and it still was not perfect. Um, but still, we had we we picked the peak power up to 440 horsepower, so we were right at a little over 100 horsepower gain on this combination, and we activated this thing about 42 or 4300 RPM and let it run all the way out to about 6500 RPM. So we had good gains. Peak torque uh, on the spike was up to 458 foot pounds. These 4.6 liter four valve motors are not known for their torque production, despite the fact that if you look at their torque curve. In this case, they made very similar peak, excuse me, peak power and peak torque numbers. It wasn't until we start adding, you know, camshaft and stuff to these things where they still uh, really start to run out in the RPM and start making more power. But here's what happened when we added the nitrous, and this worked out very well, as nitrous usually does for almost all applications. So now let's take a look at our next modification. After running the intake and nitrous on our early 4.6 liter four valve, it's time to step our game up. And that included two things that we know was going to make a serious difference in power. The first thing was changing the camshafts. And obviously the factory cams were never designed to optimize power production. So we installed, even these were mild cams, basically they were the um, XE262 AH cams. The mildest of the factory or the or the mildest off-the-shelf cams offered by comp cams and here's what happened when we put the cams in now we're a little bit jaggedy on the tune here i was not responsible for this but they you can see that they added quite a bit of power it picked power up from 336 all the way up to 376 horsepower so 40 foot pounds i also like the fact that through most of the curve there were gains uh, maybe a little bit of a drop off big below 37 or 3800 rpm but not a lot we're talking about a couple of foot pounds 286 versus 290 yeah three or four foot pounds and just big gains obviously this thing would rev out farther and maybe make a better combination with the short runner intake although that we didn't try that with the camshafts but one thing that we did try was and this is something that all motors respond to and certainly this early 4.6 liter 4 also responds to that and that's boost now what we installed was a kenny bell twin screw supercharger this combination was non-intercooled and we did run on 100 octane race gas here's what happened after we installed the kenny bell supercharger this was run at about 8.7 or 8.8 .8 pounds we were up to 485 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 433 foot pounds. You can see it just picked the power up basically everywhere, which is what we like to see, especially in the torque production, because now the thing was making over 400 foot pounds basically everywhere. And that's really kind of what makes the thing fun, especially on the street. But we did what everybody else does when they run boost <laughs> although i would have liked to have seen an intercooler on this combination but we ran we did what everybody else does we increased the boost despite the fact that we did not have an intercooler on this so we stepped the boost up to about 12 pounds on this combination and just because we were so close to 500 horsepower we wanted to top the 500 horsepower mark which we did with 506 horsepower peak torque checked in at 464 foot pounds now We've made eight, nine hundred, a thousand horsepower with this same kind of setup, but with like an O3 Cobra motor with a Kenny Bell on it that has the intercooler and has the bigger blower on it. So there's a ton of power potential left there. And obviously, if you take a look at what John Mahovitz did from Acufab <laughs> with these 4.6 liter four valves, I mean, the sky's the limit. He's making you know, way more than 2,000 horsepower, probably more than 2,500 now. So there's a ton of potential there. But I just wanted to show you guys what the average guy could get from an early 4.6 liter four valve. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our performance upgrades on our 1996 to 1998 
4.6 liter, four valve, Cobra motor. Now sure, we couldn't cover everything. There's turbos, there's ported heads, and there's displacement. There's a lot of stuff, but we did cover a lot of cool stuff. We've got intake manifolds, we got camshafts, we got nitrous, and we've got boost. So you got a lot of good stuff going on there. A lot of ways to show you what works and what doesn't. Let me know what else I missed and we'll keep testing. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.